Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Anders and, and Andre. Hello. Yes, here we are. Um, we're uh, firstly, we just want to say thanks to everyone who's been playing uh, playing the game, and for all the feedback we've gotten. It's been a lot of really good feedback, which is very exciting for us. Uh, and uh, we thought we'd do a quick uh, sort of, uh, I guess, a beginner's tutorial, but also. Uh, Andre will get into some of the um, uh, like kind of quick tips and stuff that we haven't covered in the in the in-game tutorial yet, uh, and we were thinking this might be a good format for it. So um, we're going to play a multiplayer match, and Andre will be sort of commenting over what he's doing and, and explaining, you know, the concepts and, and so on, just during a match. And we'll hopefully, if people like this one, we'll try to do more in-depth ones later. Uh, that cover specific strategies or something, perhaps. So we'll see. Um, but first, do uh, you want to take it away, uh, Andre? Yeah, so um, when I click multiplayer, I'll connect to the, the best region. And we're in Australia, so um, it's going to be Oceania. Uh, I can't connect to other regions, but we'll play here. Um, uh, have my name, open lobby, you can see your game. And I'm in. Awesome. I am ready when you are. Yes. Um, so I'll let you talk for most of the, the tutorialization there, Andre, and you just uh, let me know when you want me to <laughs> join in. Yeah, no worries. Okay, so we're going to play a one-on-one. -on -one, and the first thing I want to do is uh, select this uh, tribe unit. Um, and I want to find a good spot to settle. So first thing in my thought process is kind of leave around this fertile soil. I want to keep it for farms later, but I still want to have the, the settlement uh, kind of close to food, these uh, fruit trees and uh, the animals. So uh, I think this is uh, an okay spot. I'll uh, select all my villagers, uh, ask them to build, and I'll start uh, exploring with the scout, kind of see what's going around here. Um, so uh, new villagers will then uh, be trained automatically at the village center. And the first mechanic we can kind of uh, go into a bit is the, the food mechanic. So um, right now I don't have so much food. Uh, what I want to do is try to get my food count up as early as possible because with more food, uh, a higher food surplus, um, villagers will uh, be trained quicker. And if you have more villagers, you can um, have, yeah, they, there's just more people to gather uh, food and uh, wood, etc. So uh, it puts you in a good position to have a stronger economy early game. Also something to consider is that villagers in the Feral Crescent, it, it's not very common for this in RTS games, but they're actually pretty good at uh, fighting. So they're your uh, last line of uh, defense. So. Uh, if you get a, a few extra villagers, uh, it also means you have a little bit of extra defense. Uh, as the, these uh, fruit trees deplete, uh, I will hunt. Uh, hunting is a uh, pretty good early game for, for food production. And also I'll, I'll uh, soon run out of space for my villagers. I've uh, got 10 villagers and 10 housing, so I'll make a dwelling uh, pretty quickly. Now, I want to start getting some bricks, and the thing with bricks is I need to be like clay pit or uh, marshland, but that marshland also uh, is needed for farms. Um, so sometimes I'll actually um, consider putting a clay pit a bit away. Uh, but that will also make me more exposed for attacks. Uh, I'll, I'll just take that risk. We'll, we'll make a uh, clay pit here and uh, a resource camp. So the reason I'm making the resource camp next to the, the clay pit is that um, the villagers will drop off resources at the resource camp. They don't have to go all the way back to the village center, which makes it um, faster. Another thing is uh, the villagers can drop off meat at the resource camp as well. So. 
um, if if it's a shorter distance, they'll just they'll go here instead of all the way there. So early game is uh, you know a little bit about uh, uh, trying to make your economy a bit uh, more efficient. So um, I'll probably want to try to have a few villagers on clay fairly early because uh, all buildings require clay. Um, and I'll soon need to make another house, so I'll do that now. So, uh, something we should do pretty early is to find the scout. Um, uh, one, one way of finding it is you can just drag all the units and you'll, I'll see the scout here if you can't spot it uh, behind some objects. So, I got the scout. You can see Anders is scouting me trying to, to check out what I'm doing. Um, so one way you can do this uh, to try to find your opponent to see what it's up to uh, is if you hold shift and you have the scout selected, I can right click here, then I'll right click uh, at the bottom part and then the right part of the map and then back to the base and he'll just kind of follow these waypoints now. So he'll go to the first waypoint that we set, then he'll go here, and then he'll go here and then he's going to go back here and, and stay here. Um, so, uh, I have enough clay, I'll probably build a barracks pretty early on, just to uh, be able to make some uh, warriors, um, ha like start making an army. Uh, another thing is, uh, because I've had a pretty good food surplus, uh, my knowledge generation is pretty high. And when this each time this bar goes to the end, which happens faster with a, a higher food surplus, uh, I accumulate a knowledge point. So now I, that I got a few, um, I can uh, research technologies instantly. So there's some uh, military ones and economy based ones. I usually try to go economy first. Uh, this militia is uh, is good for defending your village early if you if you need to um, because it makes your villagers strong around a, a radius of your village center but I'm kind of not suspecting under to attack right away so I'll not do that yet I'll make sure I have improved wood cutting and I'm not gonna do plow yet because I don't need the 15% farming speed yet. I'm, I still don't have any farms, and then I'll do the the masons to get some extra digging speed and, and construction repair speed. So now that's done. Um, all these people now don't really have anything to do. Um, I might build another granary here because then uh, these villagers can um, pick some fruits and hunt. Um, and then I've uh, used up all the, the clay in this area, so I have to make another uh, clay pit. Uh, and then I'll need some house still. Uh, let's see, so Anders at, is at the bottom of the map. Uh, I can see he's uh, starting to make an archery range, um, which means he might be making slingers. So either the slingers are pretty good at uh, poking your economy, maybe we'll try to take out some of my villagers. I'm not sure at this point, might, might just place a, a watchtower here because then I can place some villagers in the watchtower just, just in case it comes poking. It's pretty pretty exposed area here now, only villagers. Uh, the other strategy you might do is uh, with slingers is uh, he might make some watchtowers himself and, and put them in the watchtowers, so we'll see. I might actually just put my uh, slinger here and kind of see, like, if he if he sends some guys towards my base, um, might be able to spot it before it happens. Now, so this villager has a, a question mark. Um, so if if villagers uh, um, are idle, um, they'll just stand there. And what this symbol means is these villagers are carrying some wood, so you can kind of, maybe I want him to continue um, chopping some wood, or I, I might want this villager to deliver the wood, and then she will automatically continue chopping. Um, but 
here uh, you can see you can uh, toggle between Isle Villagers. So I can click this button and get get to different Isle Villagers. And also I can click this button and I get all the villagers and I can ask them to do something. So it's that's pretty convenient. Uh, a good tip here is to, to learn the, the hotkeys O or I. So for example, if I see this number is one, I might click I. The camera pans and I can uh, do something with this villager. So you don't want lots of villagers being idle. Like here, I might press O, get all the villagers, and then send them up here to do something. Uh, there's not really so much uh, hunt and, and fruit trees left, uh, so I'm going to start transitioning into um, farms. So one thing, a tip here is uh, you'll, you'll make a lot of farms, right? And you have all these people uh, that you might want to start farm. So it's a good way, um, good point. Uh, <laughs> A good uh, time to talk about hotkeys because uh, you might think that you know, like uh, people play RTS games and it looks like they're doing things really quickly, but often the difference between a slow and a quick player is just knowing hotkeys. So if you learn just this one hotkey, like A for construct buildings and then um, T for farms, I can select all these units and I can hold Shift to make a uh, um, waypoints and then I can click A and T that's all you have to remember and then I can just put down all these farms at once so it's really convenient and they will just uh, build the farms one by one and the farmer will take each farm so it's a pretty quick way to make uh, lots of buildings I can do the same with uh, houses if I need lots of houses I hold shift press A and then W so this is kind of like a, you know, a, a tip that uh, uh, you know, pro pro players or good uh, online players will do, and uh, it gives them an edge because uh, they can do some um, tasks a bit faster than others. Um, so uh, it can be really worthwhile to just, you know, you don't have to learn all of them at once. If you know, for example, uh, that uh, um, to build is A, and then W and the farm T. You can see the the houses and the farms are, you know, more than half the buildings. So for over half the buildings, you can do like this boom, 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 right? Or you can click this villager, make a farm, quick, bam, and then uh, you know you get a, a you can do more actions. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I need to make another clay pit. Uh, I, I do have a lot of clay, a lot of wood. So, Thunders has an attack. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I, want, I want access to these uh, gray technologies. Um, the way to do that is make a palace. Uh, the palace is pretty expensive, but I can afford it. So, the, like the pa village center, if I place a palace and I have a militia, all my villagers around the palace will also uh, become militia automatically while they're within range. So I'll make palace, takes a while to construct, so I'll actually have some uh, additional villagers helping out. Uh, and also seems like honors killed my scout. Uh, probably some units in the tower took it out. So I might uh, click the resource cam and make another scout. Pretty cheap. Um, just see if I'm able to scout again. Now I got the village center. Uh, no, uh, sorry, the palace is up now. So uh, you see all these villagers now. I, I, you know, I, I made a building, or maybe, maybe even like I use my villagers to pen up some defenders, right? So what I can do is I can uh, double click to get all the nearby villagers, or I can use the rectangle box. Um, like this. And then there's actually a button, uh, continue to gather last resource. That's also a hotkey you can learn. So yeah, again, you, you've been fighting or building stuff and you have all these idle villagers. They have these uh, food icons above. You double click the villager and then you press this button or you just press S, bam. They will remember what they did last and they'll just go back. So that's a really uh, convenient trick to learn. Um, as you probably noticed when I made the selection box, um, only the, the military units were selected. 
that's because I have a, a setting. Um, so I, in gameplay here, there's uh, something called smart unit selection. Uh, it removes any civilian units from selection if selection box selects military units. So if I disable this, uh, when I make the selection box, it would select both the villagers and the X-Men. Sometimes that's convenient, you know, uh, someone's attacking you and you want to just select all units, but I like to kind of um, only um, select military units um, and, and call the villagers, that's just my preference. Um, I have a lot of technology points now, I've had a, still have a pretty good food economy, I don't have as so many uh, military units yet, I'm not too scared of others attacking me. <laughs> uh, well, maybe I should be. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see. I've been very quiet. Very quiet. <laughs> yeah. So I, now I got farms. So I'm gonna do uh, plow. is really important technology to keep your food production up. Um, I'm also gonna, because uh, under scared me a bit there. So I'm gonna um, research militia. And you, you can see the the defense symbol above all the all the villagers. And as I move them outside radius. They'll come off and they will never, no longer carry the weapon, showing that they're just villagers again. Put them in and look, yeah. So I'm going to make a, a resource camp and I'm going to do some mining. So I'm going to get some metal and I'm going to unlock the improved mining. And also I want to boost my economy a bit. So I'm going to research code of law because then um, villager training speed is increased. So I'll kind of keep uh, focusing on my economy for a bit. Uh, I'm gonna make a resource camp up here. Wait, I don't It's got selected up here so that these woodcutters don't have to travel so far. Uh, I have a lot of wood so I can just uh, make more uh, grand race. Again, if it looks like I'm doing things a bit quick, it's just, you know, I've learned the hotkeys, otherwise I have to drag the mouse all the way down here, click, all the way here, click, all the way here, much slower. Okay, I got no idle villagers. Um, I'm gonna make a furnace, so I can use my metal, get some equipment. And now that I have the palace, I can make more advanced units, so... I'll make some heavy axemen. Um, and at this point, like, I have no idea what Honors is up to. I know he's built some towers, probably defensive, might have some range units, but I'm not really sure what he's doing. I might actually build another scout to just have on each side and just, just see if we can see what he does. I do actually have a lot of clay. I don't need so many people on it. Uh, can probably focus more on uh, clearing this area for farmland. Might even put one to do the hunt. Okay, so let's see if we can see what Anders is up to. So I got another scout here, and of course, again, I can use the minimap to quickly um, right click to, to tell them where they're they going. So I'm gonna sneak in. So he, he's got the wheel upgrade. You can see the little, um, oh, what's the what, what's the word for it? Uh, for what? The wheelbarrow? The wheelbarrow, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not a wheelbarrow, it's a wagon kind of thing. Yeah, they kind of, they're dragging it behind them. Yeah. Uh, uh, something is happening in your base. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, so no. he has just gone all in on military units. Let's see how the villagers do. Can we survive? I'm just gonna use all the villagers. Yeah, these have upgraded helmets and axes. Oh, wow. Uh, but they're not upgraded units. Um, see. I can... Uh, so you can see the villagers are doing pretty well, but they are fighting strong units. Um, so I think he managed to kill a few. But yeah, so at least early game to mid game, always consider using your villagers to defend. Uh, you're done, press this button or rise, and they just go back and continue whatever. Um, 
I'm gonna make some towers. I'm gonna make some more military buildings. Uh, one issue I kind of have now is uh, the food economy. Um, now I'm using a lot of food producing units. Um, so I have to be a bit on the ball when it comes to, to farms. Uh, one thing I can do to boost the economy a bit is uh, researching wheel myself. So uh, with the wheel, the, the villagers can carry more resources and it adds uh, move speed as well as you can produce battering rams. So probably just going to do that. Okay, so he's making the heavy axemen. Um, let's, let's counter that. So I can actually do bronze smelting and I'm, I'm actually going to make a few swordsmen and archers. So swordsmen are the, the most powerful unit. However, they do cost a lot of food to produce and feed, so I'll have to be a bit more on the ball with the food economy to be able to build that up. Um, so I'm, I'm putting two villagers in to just get a little bit of uh, a boost of knowledge. So the, these priests, whenever there's villagers in here, they produce some extra knowledge. Um, just get get the text a bit faster, even though I don't have so much food. Uh, but of course, you should always try to have a little bit of uh, food surplus instead. Um, so these units are all kind of none of them are upgraded. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna gonna get the uh, probably copper helmet to begin with because all these units um, have helmets and it means that they'll be able to withstand a bit more damage might try to clear this wood another thing you can do is uh, you can click the barracks um, I just want to pump out swordsman, and you see the the hotkey for swordsman is uh, R, and I can fill out all these uh, production queues by um, pressing uh, Control and then the hotkey. Bam! So I'm just gonna try to pump out as many as I can, uh, and continue to focus on the food economy. Uh, I got a lot of wood. Don't don't need all these people on wood. And also, I've uh, make sure the farms aren't too away from the granary because uh, then again they have less distance. If if this farm farmer had to go all the way to the village center and back, it's not as not as efficient. Okay, so. Uh, just trying to get some metal because the, the swordsman required, and we want some more equipment. I'm also gonna build a workshop to get some siege units. Uh, I kind of want to take down these towers at some point. Oh, so Honors is making a wonder. Uh, each time he finishes the stage, he gets uh, knowledge points, and if he gets to the the fourth stage, he just kind of wins the game. I'm gonna go kind of all in on the elite swordsman. They're really strong. And uh, I have a lot of metal, so let's just do it. Um, they get attack bonus, and they also evade 25% of the enemy attacks. So they they basically get 25% more hit points. So let's just do that. Let's go all in, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Uh, uh, we'll do the bronze helmet. So again, all these units get some extra um, armor against this range units. I just. I assume I saw some archers, he had the towers, and I'm just gonna do that. Uh, still, the food economy is getting better, but I'm still producing a lot of expensive swordsmen. I'm still just gonna make sure my food economy is as good as it gets. Um, okay. Oh, he has the, the stage two already, I think. I think we need to kind of poke at him because. And we also not need to kind of try to find, figure out where this wonder is. Okay. Um, 
Might have to. I'm actually gonna just build some more. Uh, get some clay. I'm out of clay now. Okay, so here we got some units. That's awesome. That will cripple this economy a little bit. So that's the thing. If you expand outside your base and don't have walls or towers, it's pretty, pretty good. Easy target. Oh, he's got some walls. Um, I guess it's the wonder would be around here. I'm just gonna try to avoid his uh, towers for now. Uh, try to take out a few. Um, I'm gonna actually focus on this. Uh, uh, okay. Now the issue I have is uh, I don't have any siege units. Uh, so my my swordsmen are really good against these archers. They have so much armor. I'm gonna get even more bronze armor and bronze shield because these sappers have a shield. So if you get bronze equipment, that's that's really good. That that should be an aim because uh, your your units will have a huge uh, uh, advantage against non bronze units. Um, so what I want to do now is try to take down um, these towers. So first thing I want to do is take down the these axemen. Uh, you can shoot units in a tower. I'm gonna send these uh, sappers to take down the tower. I'm actually gonna upgrade the sappers, so they're gonna be really good against this tower. And then the swordsmen can just clean them up. I got a, a battering ram here, cleaning up this tower. Uh, I'm gonna s select all units, like the sapper. Uh, make sure they go this way instead. Uh, so now I'm really cleaning up. Um, actually, yeah, the archers are doing a pretty good job. Just continue to send down. So, uh, like I said, the, the villagers are are pretty good. Um, against like early game units, but now these, these swordsmen are really strong. Uh, he has killed a few of them, but uh, they are very strong, so villagers can't really do anything against armor. Um, so the, these archers get a, a, a bonus, so um, he's pretty good at killing my archers actually, but um, I'm able to do a little bit of damage. Now I'm gonna send down the sappers to kind of clear the building. Uh, and I hope to damage his economy, really. Like, he has no one on farm now, and I hope he just can't afford to wonder. That's kind of kind of my strategy here. <laughs> we'll see how well. Uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like you might almost be done with the wonder. Like, Yeah. Are you going to win a wonder victory? I might have snuck in just before. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh look, you you had a, a way a better more, econ than you. Huh? Yeah, better food. Um, uh, pretty even on warriors kills lost. Uh, yeah, one more technology. Mm. Pretty pretty even on equipment. Uh, so yeah, yeah my strategy I guess was uh, the swordsman. They did really well in the siege units, but yeah, you were. Uh, doing a good job defending this wonder here, hey? So, you wanna tell me about your game? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm not the most strategic player around, um, but uh, I went pretty hard, so I tried to make food not an issue. So I tried to solve that as a problem very early in the game. And uh, I put up a few towers and a few ranged units just to, just to have some uh, defense. Mm. And then I went really hard on farms. Um, what I have been doing more recently is to start um, placing granaries around. Uh, so everywhere you see a granary uh, in my base, um, there was a, like a bunch of, of fruit trees around them. And then I, I kind of started prioritizing that as well as doing the farms, which meant that I w had a lot of food. Uh, and then uh, I just started going heavy on the, on the tower. Oh, sorry, on the on the wonder rather, mm. uh, and I put up a very basic uh, defense there uh, with some towers, um, which I could probably have been more effective in defending my base by bringing some of those archers out of the the towers near the ta uh, the wonder, um, just because they were just kind of hanging out there and not doing much uh, while you were attacking and, and destroying my other towers. 
but I kind of uh, was betting on my wonder being finished pretty soon. Mm. Uh, so that's that's the that was the the uh, assessment I made that I was just gonna be able to you know outlast you. I was also starving at the end there. Um, yeah, so you, was, you put all your villagers to your wonder as well as defending. So <laughs> yeah, so it was it was a bit clutch, but it, I made it. And I feel very good about it. <laughs> yeah, how how early did you get the wheel? Because uh, I can see uh, um, I got uh, more granaries uh, closer to, to the farms from pretty equal on farms. I think I might have a few more even, and you had more food. So I wonder yeah. if the the wheel made a big difference. I, yeah, it would have. Like, that was the first thing I did when I got the palace. I, I tried to get the palace pretty fast. Hmm. Uh, I didn't like go straight for it but i was trying to get get there pretty fast and then mm. i um th yeah then i then i got the wheel immediately afterwards and then i went very quickly on on code of law as well um so that i would uh, get 40 percent village village training speed yeah uh increase as well so then i would have just a stronger economy um overall which seemed to have worked for me yeah, I yeah was, uh, that was basically my strat. That's a good game. Uh, yes. con congratulations on the on the victory. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's not like you were distracted by <laughs> tutorializing or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll will take it. That was a was a good game. Uh, they they tried to pull off the the swordsman fully upgraded strategy, mm. and uh, I think yeah. I think it would have worked, but. Uh, yeah, the, definitely Wonder was a, a surprise. Yeah, I'm full of them. Um, so for all of you who've been watching, um, I guess we hope that was uh, useful to you, that you learned something. Uh, you know, Andre is the designer from, of most of what's going on in the game here, so he knows it pretty well. There's some good good tips that he's got. Um, if you enjoyed this, then, you know, we'll, we'll do more of them. Uh, just send us, let us a... Uh, know in the comments or, or come see us on the discord and uh, tell us there and we'll try to do more advanced strats ones we also have some very cool creators in the community uh, who are doing videos like this as well so we'll try to get as much information about how like more advanced strats uh, out there as soon as we can um do you want to do you have anything else andre no uh, that's it no. for me cool well uh, thanks very much, everyone, for watching, and we'll, we'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you all. Cheers.